Subscription, pull, subscribe on the channel, and go on the computer and watch his channel. Goodbye, you. see you tomorrow. We do a video and subscribe on the channel. All right, folks, come down to the river just to chuck around some baits. It is about six o'clock in the evening. Um, my buddy gave me a handful of Guggen Squad, which I made a point in my fishing career. I would never buy a Guggen Squad bait, but he gave me a handful of their bladed jigs. I don't know why, but I'm always down to at least test a bladed jig because I'm finding ones um, some are overrated some are underrated some just lost their total quality control period and um, I'm just always you know interested in trying out a different design um it's got more of a uh, like you see the head on it more of like a fixed head with that bead keeping the blade and so being bluegill skirt i paired it up with one of the few boot tail blade jig trailers that i will use because it's subtle being a uh largo shad 3.5 i got some spinner baits with me i have some buzz baits with me and on the Spinning rod end of things. I thought we'd start out with an eighth ounce Berkley uh, Fusion 19 head with a Kitek 3.3 fat swing impact and that silver shad just bait fish. I mean, that's about as straight bait fish profile as you can get. Look over where I came from. And I get here I mean, I just had my windshield wipers on and I didn't bring any sunglasses because I didn't want them to get wet. So that's all right. That's all right. Can't be perfect all the time. I, I try, I strive for perfection, but I think I'm just OCD. So, uh, got any more yip yapping and him hawing. Let's get down there and catch some fish. So guys, today, luckily I, I had, I was able to lighten the load as far as what's in the backpack. I got a couple flat bags, you know, with skirted baits on them. And this is dry enough to where I can even take the backpack off and set it down. So that's cool. Uh, just lean my rods up against it. I'm, I'm curious. I would normally start with uh, finesse, but I'm curious to see just how this bait works and um this is a good spot for bladed jig fish i've caught them here before um this here is a little flat and i tell you what that that uh jig started going uh blade started going as soon as i engage my reel that's a good sign that is a good sign i might not care for the guggen dudes personally but you know that's a big thing when you're talking blade to jigs man because for example if you got a target and you know i mean we're talking target rich environment where you know there's a good one or couple sitting on a you know rock pile or tapered point or whatever and you cast let's say the original z-man chatterbait in the 3 8 ounce and you got to keep popping your reel or your rod tip just to get that bait to start uh that blade to start engaging and you're done past the target before that blade even kicks in not only did you probably spook the fish away but you just missed the opportunity to capitalize on it I think this feels like a half ounce bait to me. Um, I'm, I'm throwing it on a slow reel. This is a six one to one. 
And what I like about that Largo Shad is, it, is it's subtle. And it's not generating too much lift. All right. So another rare bait, but it's painted blades, a uh, red Strike King Banshee spinner bait. You know, being that it's still spring and uh, we got fish that are still feeding on crawl, especially our smallmouth friends. And also, uh, if there's any muskie around, man, they've been known to hit a spinner bait. It happens to be the slack water back here where I have seen musky and gar and the bigger toothy critters cruising around to get out of the current and be able to conserve energy, the bigger fish, you know, and still eat the little, or, you know, the littler fish that are around. Wow, that swims really nice. I do good with these banshees, man. You don't got to put a trailer. They come with a trailer hook. Um, I got a black and blue one that I've had for a couple years. It's been featured in a couple episodes. That, man, I've caught some big smallmouth, big largemouth, big spotted bass. You name it, buddy. It's just a good spinnerbait. But it's got a Colorado kicker. It's not a double willow like this. That thing's swimming truer than true can get right there. Yep. Hey, dude. Hey, buddy. You little short striker. You look at that trailer hook. Look at that trailer hook. Yep. The old red spinner bait paid off. How about that? We'll simmer down and I'll get you off there. Simmer down, boss. You little swiper, you. Hey, bud going on thank you man you are a warrior you are a warrior can I get a little picture can I get a little picture huh you got time just real quick Thanks, dude. All right. We will throw the um, little dipper and the way I like to fish them when I'm putting them on an underspin, especially with the a 90 degree lines high, is I line up the head next to the bait and then I, I cut the head off so it, it just you know, kind of flows better with, it's a better looking presentation. Um, people are, are tripping on the chartreuse head being like some big secret thing now. 
uh, I mean, if you fish for smallmouth and, and walleye and, and river running and even even largemouth, I mean, you can't go wrong with chartreuse ever in my book. I mean, I've used it in clear water and caught fish. So there's something magical about chartreuse and blue on a crankbait. Chartreuse, period. It must look mighty tasty to them fish in the water. Well, let's flick a couple over here on the flat, see if anything's biting in the flat, and then we'll call it. Let's see what time it is here. 6.40, so I'll get home about a little after 7. Come on, one more. You really gotta um, fish stuff fast because this is shallow in here and I've lost so many good baits in here by not engaging my reel and starting my retrieve fast enough. Uh, yeah, it sucks. Like some Lucky Craft uh, lipless and stuff like that, but man, if you're not prepared to lose it, don't throw it. Especially from shore. If you're out on a boat, it's different. And you still lose stuff. But you got a better chance of getting it back. From the shore. Man. I've tried to come up with ways and means. But dude, it's tough, man. Current can be your friend. It can lift stuff out of hangups. And so can monofilament be your friend when fishing from the bank. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got us a white bass. Yeah. Hey, dude. Was you seeking refuge in there? Huh, little buddy? Was you seeking refuge in there? Well, give me back my bait, bud. All right, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. Nothing big, but dude, when you gotta cure the itch. When you gotta cure the itch. And that's what we set out to do. Oh, now they're gonna start feeding, huh? Little white bass. All right. All right, little bud. Yeah. All right, folks. Well, I want to thank y'all for joining me on a little junk fishing special. Um. You know, this time of year, um, presentations like that can really pay off. Um, let's try, I try to be mindful of what I'm bringing as far as my finesse presentation. And also, sorry, get my other shoe. Um, on my cat, you know, on the power end of things. And we were able to not put a pattern together. We did some junk fishing, but you know, I was going to leave. And I said, man, let me just flip, flip one in, over here in the flat and see if anything's waiting to ambush some bait. And we got us another one. So that's cool, man. I just wanted to come out and cure that itch that we all got to lean into one and reel down. You know what I mean? So that being said, y'all, 
Dave T and I will be out on some waters. I ain't figured it out yet, but we're going to go out tomorrow. So I'm going to get something to eat, head home. If there's enough light, um, start working on uh, getting that trans transducer mounted because I got the biggest hose clamp I could find at Lowe's. I got some black zip ties. Got some flex loom to run it, run it through. All that good stuff. So um, until the next one, guys. Cover water and um, think about crawdads and bait fish. You know, especially the reason why I brought that large, larger spinner bait is because this is a big body of water and it's not as overbearing in a big body of water like this to where is I wouldn't even think about chucking that in the pond that we go to I, I throw more of the finesse or smaller stuff so um, same thing goes with bladed jigs or like 1.0s instead of you know some big old square bill it's just you're just more likely to you know get on them and on a small body of water now when you come out to this big waterways you can throw the big baits you can whip out the glide bait stick and chuck s waivers if you want you can i'm not saying you can't do that in a pond but sometimes it's just too much for those little bodies of water you know so but um i think things are really going to start ramping up really fast so Hope y'all enjoyed the episode. Make sure you're subscribed so you're eligible to win the monthly giveaways. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Don't if you don't. I don't ask for no contributions or anything. I'm a one-man band, self-funded guy. The only thing I could ask from any of you guys is just please share the show. Share it on any of your social media platforms. Maybe get some new subscribers on board to the subscriber squad nation and um other than that go out there and get after them until the next one guys this is brian from guy with the gopro fishing show out for now but just for now be easy people and be good to each other peace